1. Three stages between birth and death. According to the Vedas, there are three stages between birth and death, and then between death and birth, which continue continuously. Those three states are, waking, dreaming and deep sleep. Hinduism is the name of the method to come out of the above three states. This sequence goes like this, when an awake person sleeps on the bed. He first goes into the dream state and then when the sleep becomes deeper, he is in the deep sleep state. In the reverse order, he awakens again in the morning. A person remains in all the three states at the same time. Some people see dreams even while awake, that is, they go into deep imagination. The person who comes out of the above three states and establishes his own existence is on the true path of salvation, liberation and God. One gets out of the above three stages respectively. For this, one has to remain in witness mode while meditating continuously, only then one attains, Turiya state, Turiyatid state, God consciousness and Brahmi consciousness. 1. Awakened state. If you are reading this article now, are you reading in an awakened state? To live exactly in the present is the awakened state of consciousness. But most people do not even live exactly in the present. Being lost in imagination and thoughts while awake is the state of dreams. When we are planning something for the future, we do not live in the present and go into the world of imagination. This world of imagination is not reality but a kind of dream world. When we get lost in some memory of the past, we go into memory world. This is also a different kind of dream world. Most of the people die after living in the dream world, they are able to live only 10% of their life in the present. So living in the present is the awakened state of consciousness. 2. Dream state. The state between wakefulness and sleep is called dream state. Drowning in sleep is called sushupti state. In dreams the person remains partly awake and partly asleep. There is a mix of vague experiences and emotions in it, hence there is no confidence as to when and how a person will dream. It is like removing all the traffic lights and police from a crowded area and turning off the street lights. In such a situation, the movement of a tree would indicate the presence of a ghost or the movement of a rope would be like being followed by a snake. Our dreams are based on our life, thoughts, emotions and happiness and sorrow throughout the day. It can create any kind of world. 3. Sushupti state. Deep sleep is called Sushupti. In this state the consciousness, we ourselves, along with the five sense organs and five action senses rest. Five sense organs, eyes, hearing, secretion, smell and skin. Five functional senses, speech, hand, foot, present and foot. The state of sleep is an inactive state of consciousness. This state is free from experiences of happiness and sorrow. In this state no kind of pain or suffering is experienced. In this state there is neither action nor the possibility of action. At the time of death, most people go into a deeper state than this. Turiya state, the fourth state of consciousness is called Turiya consciousness. This state is achieved through the efforts of the individual. This state of consciousness has neither any quality nor any form. It is formless, formless. There is neither awakening nor dream nor deep sleep in it. It is complete awakening without thought and beyond imagination of past and future. It is like clear and calm water whose bottom is visible. Turiya means fourth. For the convenience of saying something about it, let's address it by number. It is like transparent glass or a white screen of a cinema on which nothing is being projected. Consciousness like waking, dreaming, deep sleep etc. happen on the screen of Turiya only and as they happen, the Turiya consciousness projects them exactly to our experience. This is base consciousness. The spiritual journey begins from here, 
because on this side of the turiya is the sorrow of the world and on the other side is the joy of salvation just need to take the leap turiyatid state the first step beyond the turiyat state is the turiyatid experience this stage comes after the experience of turiya becomes permanent a person who has attained this state of consciousness is called a yogi or yogastha a person established in this state does not get tired even while doing continuous work in this state work and rest meet at one point once you have achieved this state you become free from life while still alive in this state the person does not need the physical body or senses he can do everything even without them the transcendental state of consciousness is also called sahaj samadhi bhagavat consciousness while living in the state of turiyatit the state of bhagavat consciousness is attained without any sadhana after this development becomes easy natural and effortless in this state nothing remains hidden from the person and he starts considering the entire world as the authority of god this is the state of a great siddha yogi brahmi consciousness after bhagavat consciousness brahmi consciousness arises in the person i e full blooming of lotus the distinction between devotee and god should disappear aham brahmasmi and tatvamasi means i am brahma and this entire world appears to me as brahma this state is called the state of samadhi in yoga salvation while alive 2 such is the scene of yamapuri yampuri is mentioned in many texts in which its detailed description is found in garuda purana kathopanishad etc 12 days after death the soul starts its journey to yamlok during these 12 days she gains strength by eating pindar daan made by her sons and relatives after 12 days when all the work is completed the soul leaves for yamlok it is considered to be at a distance of 86000 yojanas from the mortal world i.e. the earth one scheme covers a distance of about 4 kilometers There is also mention of river Vetrani on this route to Yamlok. This river is very terrible. It is full of excrement and blood. It contains meat sludge. People who do not donate in their life drown in this river while traveling to Yampuri after death and are later taken out by the messengers of Yama. The path to Yampuri is very long. The soul travels for 17 days and reaches Yampuri on the 18th day. There is also a description of a river in Yampuri in which clean water flows and lotus flowers remain in bloom. The name of this river is Pushpuraka. There is a banyan tree on the banks of this river where the soul rests for a while. By then a full month has passed since he left his body and sitting under this banyan tree he eats the monthly pindar daan made by his sons. Then after crossing some cities she reached in front of Yamraj from there the soul gets punishment or respect according to its deeds Yama loka is believed to be spread over an area of 1 lakh yojanas it has four main gates the east gate is for yogis rishis siddhas yakshas and gandharvas this door is decorated with gems like diamonds pearls sapphires and topaz here the souls are welcomed with the songs of gandharvas and dance of apsaras after this the second important gate is the north gate which is studded with various gems here auspicious songs are performed with veena and mridang donors ascetics truthful people people who serve mother father and brahmans come here The west gate is also decorated with gems and here too the living beings are welcomed with auspicious songs. Here such souls get entry who have sacrificed their lives in pilgrimages or have sacrificed their lives for the protection of cows, friends, family or the nation. The south gate of Yampuri is considered the most terrifying. There is always complete darkness here. There are dangerous creatures like poisonous snakes, snakes, lions, wolves etc. at the gate which injure everyone who comes. 
All sinners get entry here. 3. The rebirth of the being. According to the beliefs of Hindu religion, a living being has to take birth again and again. He suffers the consequences of the deeds of his previous birth through the tortures of hell and some he has to suffer in his next birth. Astrology has its own different opinion regarding this. According to Garuda Purana, after leaving the body, the living being first experiences the fruits of his deeds. He is subjected to various types of tortures. After many years of hellish torture he is given birth again. He attains heaven according to his deeds. Here many categories of heaven are also considered. Out of which Indra is considered to be the ruler of the middle level heaven. Heavens are considered even higher than this. Due to good deeds, living beings get to enjoy happiness here. Even after enjoying happiness, when its period ends, the living being has to be born again. 4. Prayer of Death Garun Puran says that when the soul leaves the body, two Yamduts come to take it. As are our actions, so do they take us. If the person dying is a gentleman and a virtuous soul, then there is no pain in his passing away, but if he is a miscreant or a sinner, then he has to suffer in many ways. The virtuous soul is taken away with respect and the evil soul is taken away with punishment. It is also mentioned in Garun Puran that after death, the soul is taken away by Yamduts only for 24 hours. In these 24 hours he is taken through the entire birth events. He is shown how many sins and how many virtues he has committed. After this the soul is again released in the same house where it left the body. After this, he remains there for 13 days. After 13 days he again travels to Yamlok.